we want to graph one cycle of y equals 3 secant x. And we also want to determine the period, the asymptotes, and the range for this function. So how are we going to go about doing this? Well, remember we know what about secant? We know that the secant of x is equal to what? Well, it's equal to 1 over cosine of x. Well, if we know that, we can draw cosine x as our base function. So I want you to do that first, and then come back and check the video and make sure you have the right answer. So based on what we know about the cosine of x, it should resemble what I've drawn here on this graph. And I've also labeled the points of interest. So I've got it starts at 1, and it's from negative 1. I've labeled pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 because that's where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, so there's our starting point. So what do I need to do? Well, I've got to find out some things about cosine and secant. So if the cosine of x is greater than 0 and the cosine of x is going towards 0, what do we know? Well, we need to know in relation to secant, remember, because we're talking about secant. So is the secant going to be positive, negative, where's it going? Is it going to infinity? Is it going to negative infinity? Well, if the cosine is greater than zero and the cosine of x is going towards zero, then the secant of x is going towards infinity. Now, if we look at the opposite, we have the cosine of x is less than zero and the cosine of x is still going to be going towards zero. Well, then what happens to the secant? Well, then the secant of x is going to be going towards negative infinity. Now you may not understand why that's helping you, but what that's going to do, that's helping us to find our range. So how can I use that for the range? Well, I know that in regards to the range, that to find the range we're going to go from negative infinity to a, or from a to positive infinity. Well, I know what a is, right? Because I have my function, which is y equals 3 secant x. So this is going to go from negative infinity to 3, or it's going to go from 3 to infinity. So that's going to be my range. So that's something it asked us to find, and guess what? We just found it. I still need to find the period and the asymptotes. Well, what do you know about the period? Well, we know that the period equals 2 pi over b. And what is b in this case? Well, it's a 1. So I've got 2 pi over 1. So the period is going to be 2 pi. So that's another thing. So we've got the range. We've got the periods. The only thing we're list missing here are the asymptotes. Now, there is a formula for that. So either you need to memorize it. Hopefully, it'll be given to you on an exam. But it's 2 pi, oh, it's, excuse me, it's pi over 2 plus k pi for all k's that are integers. So this is going to be your vertical asymptotes. So this is also important right here. So how does that play into what I'm going to do? Well, it says it's at pi over 2 plus k pi. So pi over 2 plus 0 would be pi over 2. So that means that when I draw it, I'm going to have a vertical line, a dashed one, at pi over 2. And if k is 1, it's going to be 3 pi over 2. So I'm going to have another dashed line here. So now what else did we learn from that? Well, it said that we know that when the cosine is greater than 0 and the cosine is going towards 0, the secant goes towards infinity. So that means over here it's going towards infinity. And when it's negative, it's going towards negative infinity. So on the other side over here now, the only thing is as I bring it in, where exactly is it going to cross the y-axis? Well, if I know the amplitude is 3, that means it's going to have to cross at 3. So it's going to have to come down like this. And what's the only thing that we know? We know that for secant in here, it's the same thing. It's going to have to come up, touch, and come down. If that doesn't make sense to you, make sure you go back and you review exactly what the secant of x graph looks like. This one has to resemble that, but it's going to be with an amplitude of 3.